Hi everyone, I'm Sui, and we are back today to go through some more YA books. Now, if you missed the first part of this series, we went through the YA section A through J. So today we are going to start with K and hopefully go to the end. As the case was in the first video, we have Tori here behind the camera filming and she will help me with some of the books, um, remembering some things hopefully. So she will talk from behind the camera. Every book on the shelf, for those people who find it interesting to see what every single book is and if you're trying to make your own collection and you want some ideas. And like I said in the first video, a lot of these books are assigned from local author events. That will be a recurring theme. And the other recurring theme I noticed from doing these first three, three shelves is there are a lot of books on these shelves that I have not read yet, which is really annoying me. But it's okay. I have so many years left to read all the things. I'm not running out of time or anything. That's kind of dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> We're gonna start with K's over here. This is The Ghost and the Goth by Stacy Cade. I got this from my friend, I remember, from either a book exchange or a birthday or something. And I think I just read it recently. And it's pretty funny. One of those books where the the girl is the ghost, you can see here, and, she, and the guy can see her and they have a, lots of funny interactions. Anyway, this one was really good for a fun fluff, fast read. And then we have the, these fairy, what are they, what are they called? The Iron Fae series, the Iron Fae. And they are by Julie Kagawa, Kagawa, I think. Oh gosh, these ones were really, really popular back in my blogging days. This one was sent to me to read for my blog back in the day, The Iron Knight, but I can't remember if it's the first one or not. How does this one go? The Iron Queen, The Iron Knight, and The Iron Daughter. I can't remember the exact order. I remember really, really loving these ones, but I'm not sure I actually got through all three. Like, it's one of those series, again, where I probably read two and didn't quite finish yet. So I need to figure that out and finish it once and for all. What I Like About You by Marissa Cantor. This is a recent book, so I actually remember it. This one is the... Uh, the, cupcakes. The cupcakes. She's a blogger and she cup, she blogs about making cupcakes that match her YA book reading. And then the, uh, the guy, <clears throat> the guy is a Twitter famous person. No, that's tweet cute. No, the guy, they, no, they are, they are both kind of known on Twitter and they're friends on Twitter. I get, I get this one mixed up with tweet cute because there are similar themed stories, but Anyway, she, this is the one where she moves and she realizes that her friend online is now her friend in real life. And she figures it out, but he doesn't figure it out. So she goes along. She doesn't want him to find out who she really is. And of course, you know that's going to happen. And then he gets mad and blah, blah, blah. But it's really cute. It's really a cute um, YA romance. And I actually loved it because I related to lots of things in this one. Even though I'm an old Grandma, I relate to these. Is that the craziest? These ones are a set. The Fallen Novels. Fallen and Torment. The Fallen Angel Novels. These are these are dark and um what's the word I want? Dark and, and <laughs> mysterious. Dark and creepy. A little bit dark and creepy and heart wrenching and yeah. This one obviously is a advanced reader's copy. I really liked these ones. Remember from back in the day, The Improbable Theory of Anna and Zach by Brian Catcher. I think this is the Comic-Con one, right? I got it for Christmas. You got it for Christmas because I liked Brian Catcher's other book. Is is that correct? I don't know. And <laughs> you did, did you ever read it? Yeah. Is it fun? Did I ever read it? I don't know if you read it, but I read it. I don't think I read it. It was cute. It's about, it's a Comic-Con one, right? Well, no, there's another Comic-Con one. The The Geek Gorilla is Comic-Con. Yeah. They ditch a high school trip to run wild at the Washington Science Fiction Convention. Okay, I need to read this one. I think I would really like it. But I I think it's, this is the author of, um, what's his face, Ghost Prom? 
Deacon Locke went to prom. Oh, right. Which was one of my favorite books that year. I I can't I can't even tell you how much I loved this that book. Deacon Locke went to prom. And we don't even have that one. We don't have it because I got it from the library. <laughs> but this one I got because it's by the same author. That she, she got it for Christmas because of that. And I don't think I ever actually read it myself. So, you know, I think I'm going to leave this one off the shelf. <laughs> That's how much I'm going to read it. Okay. Off the shelf. Okay. <laughs> um, these books. Oh, my word. Some of the best books I've ever, ever, ever read. And I know there's a third one out. I don't even know what the name of it is, but I haven't got my hands on it yet. And they're, they are especially cool in print because of all their uh, graphicness in, in them. Um, I'm, I'm hoping most of you know what these books are, but I'm guessing probably some of them, some of you don't, right? Lumine and Gemin, Gemina, Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. We met them. We met them at the author signing at the bookstore a long time ago. That was awesome to see these guys because I love, love them, love their books so much. This is a science fiction story about a mission that has gone very wrong and they're kind of stranded in space and they're waiting for somebody to rescue them. And actually the guy is on the rescue. I can't remember which one's on which. The guy's on the rescue one. Anyway, that they're coming to get them, but it's actually not a good thing, if I remember right. They're actually... <sighs> Don't spoil anything. <sighs> I haven't read it. Oh, it's so intense. And it's all told through um, messaging, emails, pictures, ship logs, ship computer logs um um what else there's there's drawings of the boat right here the boat the ship you know there's conversations and then it's a kind of a flashback so there's like a hearing you know like a court hearing that's happening and so you're reading the recordings on the for, during the court hearing kind of like yes Makes sense. And all the documents are like the evidence. That and all showing. the documents that they're using is what the book is made up of. It is so cool. And it is, and you wouldn't think that you would get so wrapped up in a story using this format, but it is one of the most intense fingernail biting books I've read and kind of violent. This one, this one especially gets a little violent um, because there's a lot of fighting. Yes. A lot of fighting. Please, people, if you haven't read these, put it on your list right now. And I need to read the third one. Now we go straight from there to another one of my most favorite series, which is These Broken Stars. And this is the first one. And this is the third, third one. <laughs> They're Fractured Light, and these, these ones are by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. So the Amy Kaufman that wrote these also wrote these. So you obviously know she's one of my favorite authors because such good stories. This is also science fiction about a rich girl who was on this cool space cruise, and it crashes. And the guy that thinks she's the most stuck-up person in the whole wide world, he's like the soldier slash guard dude on the ship um they they are together after the crash and he helps her survive and then weird stuff starts happening and it's so good four books in this series i think and they're all different couples all different in the same world and then they all come together in the fourth book. The three different couples in the first three books come together in the fourth book. I wasn't going to talk this much. This is way too much talking, is it not? It's a little too much talking. <laughs> okay, this one's called Dreamology by Lucy Keaton. You know it's a book about cool dream kind of a book where you go into the dreams. The dreams are... I can't remember the exact premise of it, but I do remember it, really enjoying it. But if you like dream books... That's a good one. <laughs> I've talked about this one many times already. The Awake... Just Awakening, not The Awakening. Awakening, Starwalker Chronicles, book one by Christopher Keeler and Matthew Keeler. They, uh, they are brothers in Australia. 
Matt is our K-pop friend since we started our K-pop channel back in 2016. And so we kind of followed him on this journey of writing this book and getting it published. And it was fun to be able to buy it from Amazon and get our hands on an actual physical copy of it. And hopefully he's working on more. This is a science fiction type of a, or is it, would you call it more of an urban fantasy? There's lots of crazy stuff that happens in this book. Let's just say that too. Lots of crazy stuff. The Dam Keeper by Robert Kondo and Dice Tsutsumi. 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 Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, I did read this one. It's a, it's a graphic novel. It's kind of a sad story. Um, but really good. Okay. Don't Know Where, Don't Know When by Annette Lang. I feel like it should be in middle grade. Why is this right here in this <laughs> YA? The Snipesville Chronicles, book one. I have no idea what this is. It, it was mine at some point. Where'd you get it? I don't know, but I remember reading it like <laughs> when I was nine or something. The Limit by Kristen Landon. This is an a local author from back in the day that I probably met at some events. Yes. And this, I remember really enjoying this one, but it was, it's been so, too long to, for me to tell you exactly what's about science, science fiction again, kind of a thing. Emily Laybourne Monument 14. I remember this one being part of an event at the library. I think about this book often. You read it, but I don't think I actually read it. You didn't read it? 14 kids, one superstore, a million things that go wrong. It's They're stuck in the store. Remember I said it's, when you were explaining Stephen King's The Mist, uh -huh. it sounds pretty similar to that, where the air becomes toxic, and so they have to hide in the, in the store, in the grocery store, not go outside. I don't think I actually got that one read. Sounds good and easy. I can read that one fast, right? Lindsay Levitt, Going Vintage. Lindsay Levitt is also local or was local. I don't know if she's moved. Um, hey, that was to me. Party, like it's 1962. <laughs> <laughs> this one takes place in the 60s? No, I need... no, it's modern, but she... Is, she likes 60s. She's trying to like declutter and like detect de -tech her life and like... Live I don't think I oh, I really really love Lindsay Levitt's books but I don't think I've read this one <laughs> but I have read the pages between us and she did this one with her friend Robin Mellum and this is kind of more middle grade-ish and uh, two friends who write letters back and forth to each other which is very similar to the book I'm hoping to put out there this year if I get lucky which I probably won't but I'm gonna try but mine's an 80s one between uh, juniors and high school, where, where this one is modern day and younger kids, right? Yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't actually read that one. This one by Lindsay Levitt, Sean Griswold's Head, one of the best books ever. <laughs> if the cover and the title doesn't grab you, I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a cute YA romance, I think. There's really nothing, there's no premise, right? It's just kids in school and the crush and... She sits behind Sean Griswold and she fantasizes about his head. Right? Mm hmm Yes. So cute. <laughs> I need to read it again. Oh, and here's another Lindsay Levitt one, The Chapel Wars. I think I read this one, but I don't remember it very well. They're just so they're just all fun, cute, easy reading books. So Lindsay Levitt, look her up. More. The Princess for Hire. This one. Cute. Okay. Kristen. Levine, The Lions of Little Rock. I don't know this one. I think. Why has it got a paperclip in it? Somebody's bookmark? It's a bookmark. <laughs> I've not seen that. I don't know who's. This is an arc I got and I didn't start it. So who knows who's halfway, who's on page 30 of this book. <laughs> uh, Rebecca Lim, Mercy. I read, I read this one. I don't remember Pioneer. how to explain book. I don't know how to explain book. Property of U.S. Army. It's a Pioneer bookstore. 
Wow. Um, and I got it last last year to, to work on their challenge last year or the year before or whenever it was I did the challenge of, with them. It was on somebody's recommended. Blessed are the cheese makers by Sarah Kate Lynch. That looks cute. Why <laughs> <laughs> oh, haven't I read this one? Where did this one come from? Is this one ringing a bell to you? I think we bought that one randomly at some random bookstore when we were, when we were on a trip, like a cute little bookstore that we found, and we bought that. That's my memory, but I have no idea where that little bookstore was. Is it supposed to be like a, a souvenir type book? Yeah. Yeah. To remind us of the place we went. Yeah, but I have no idea where it was. Dang. These are the things that make you crazy <laughs> when you go through your books. Okay. Also, it makes me crazy that I have no idea where Throne of Glass is. Sarah J. Moss, The Crown of Midnight, and we have Throne of Glass? We have Throne of Glass, but I have no idea where it is. It should be in your room, because you were the last one to read it. Maybe somebody borrowed Throne of Glass and haven't hasn't given it back. No, someone borrowed Air of Fire and hasn't given it back. <laughs> That's the third, fourth one. The third one that I'm listening to an audiobook right now, oh, actually. Right now. Yeah. So this is the only Sarah J. Moss book we have? Unless well, we... no, we also have Queen of Shadows and Empire of Storm. And they're upstairs. They're in my room. But we don't know where Throne of Glass is. We don't know where Throne of Glass is. That is driving me crazy. It's gotta be somewhere. Okay, this is Dust and Decay and Rotten Ruin by... Jonathan Mayberry and their fun um, zombie books. And he came to the library. No, he didn't. Oh, did he come? He did I come. He didn't come. No, he did come. See? Oh, he did come. Brains. He was really great. He was a great okay, author to meet at the library. That. It was Rick Yancey that was supposed to come and he yeah, didn't yeah. show up. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't remember that. Okay, zombie books if you want them. Uh, Ink and Ashes by Valin, Valin, E. Maitani. Maitani. (laughs) This is sort of an Asian-y book based on a Japanese sort of, um, she discovers her father was a member of the Yakuza, a Japanese organized crime syndicate. And this discovery opens a door that should have been left closed. Okay. I read it way many years ago. But it won, it won like, um, some awards. Yeah. This is really good. It was really good. <laughs> okay. These b- books killed me, basically. Say her name for me. Tejeda Moffy. Tejeda Moffy. The first one is called... Um, Shatter Me. Shatter Me. Shatter Me. Shatter Me. And then we have the other one. And then we have Ignite Me. And then we have Restore Me. And... The other ones are on my Kindle, and they are intense, crazy, apocalyptic stories written in the the most unique way ever with the craziest, best characters. Um, I love, love, love them, and I love all of her other books, so I just, I just love them. Okay. Infinite Days by Rebecca Maisel. I remember hearing about this one. Have I read this one? I don't think I read this one. I don't, I don't know why I haven't ever read it. Okay. A Love Like Lily by Kaylin Mangum. And these ones are all Kaylin Mangum ones. They are just cute, um, kind of heart-wrenching. When the Bow Breaks, A Love Like Lily, The Secret General of Brett Colton. But they're just nice and um, sweet, but kind of painful, sad. Why a romances? And then we have Lisa Mangum's. She, these are Shadow Mountain books, and Lisa Mangum is the editor at Shadow Mountain. But she's written her own series, The Hourglass Door, This Golden Spiral, and The Forgotten Locket. They're really cool um, portal science fiction. They go through the hourglass door. Yeah. <laughs> and she also wrote this one after Hello, which is a. Uh, modern day one takes place in New York City. I think it's a it's a day book, a book that takes place in a day. That is a prompt on Pop Sugar. Anybody wants? Read it then. Okay, oh, okay. Here we go. What's this? The Lions of Little Rock. The Lions of Little Rock. This letter goes with this. <laughs> Maybe the paperclip was this letter. <laughs> It goes with this because it's an, it's an arc, so that's the letter from the publisher. Okay, so um, 
another favorite author is uh, Melina Marchetta. She's from Australia. We have a running joke in our book club that the best authors are all from Australia, which I think could be probably true. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Finnegan of the Rock series, um, high fantasy series. And I loved, loved, loved this whole series. I have two of the books. I think there's, I don't know if there's three or four books. Anyway, they're really good. Um, useful Idiots. Two-time Carnage Award winner by Jan Mark. That's a car a Carnegie. <laughs> Carnage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a doofus. Two-time Carnegie Award winner. I don't even know what a Carnegie Award is anyway, but it sounds a lot more prestigious than Carnage. <laughs> There's all kinds of things inside of it. Oh. You got look at look at you got all these free things in here. <laughs> and this is your your summer reading weekly. I was reading Pendragon 2. So did we get this at the library? And why are all your things in this book? Look at my reading log from this moment in time. Expires when, does it say? 2009, it expires in 2009. Okay. So this must have been your book. You must know something about that one. I have no idea. <laughs> but I know Pendragon. So we have it Pendragon. Led, lead, led into Pendragon. <laughs> so where's the first? The, is this the first one? It's the first one you can show how beat up it is. Yes. This, uh, it's, how loved it is. Uh, uh, yes. This is a very loved book. The Merchant of Venice. The Pendragon the series. The Merchant of Death. <laughs> <laughs> the Merchant of Venice is Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> Who told me I could do a book to channel anyway? <laughs> the Merchant of Death. Through this doorway, an epic adventure begins. This is a series that got me into reading. This. And we have a whole bunch of paperbacks and some hardbacks down here. Do we have all of them? Yeah, that's all of them. That's all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books. I read maybe the first two, and then I was like, eh. It starts as middle grade, but then as he grows up, it turns into YA. So it's so kind of So look, he's like, like a kid, and like he's mix. a man. He's a kid. Kid. He's a kid. He's a man. He's a man. <laughs> <laughs> and then these are like extra um, little in-between books. It's about all the, the side characters, their stories. So when, when the kids couldn't get enough of these guys, we had to go to these guys. Then he also wrote this standalone that's completely different called Silo, right? Mm -hmm. When I did our 2,000 plus books um, tour of the, all the books, we, t we stopped here and told you the story about how we were supposed to go see him at the King's English Bookstore, which is a bookstore. Hopefully I will take you on a tour of one of these times when I can. And we got our dates mixed up and we missed him. And they, he was Tori's favorite author, and we it was like at the time where I was completely into the like this. where I had just finished the series, and then he was coming, and it was perfect, and then we missed it. That's the kind of thing I didn't usually do. As you can see, I'm a little spacey today, but I wasn't always that spacey back in the day. So very sad, sad story. Every Soul a Star by Wendy Mass. That's a good one. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like I remember really liking this one too. It's kind of in between middle grade and one. A middle, middle, in between one, yeah. Oh, uh, what do we have over here? The Unhappening of Genesis Lee by Shaylee MacArthur. This is a local author. I remember going to her yeah, book launch. That was a fun one. That was good. I don't know what happened to her. I haven't heard much more about her. I think of this book all the time too. Really? Yeah. Of like memories. Memories. And it's a memory one. Memory erasing. Ah. Uh, Summer of the Mariposas, Advanced Reader's Copy, Guadalupe Garcia McCall. That doesn't ring a bell. And then we have a whole bunch of Lorraine McDaniel books. A lot of these I got used from the libraries and stuff. Are all these right here? This whole section right here. I'm not going to go through all those, those titles, but... Um, and I don't remember if I actually got into them, but my, my daughter was really into them. My older daughter. One Last Wish is the series. Please Don't Die and All the Days of Her Life. There's Please Don't Die and Don't Die, My Love. What's happening? Uh, Heart-wrenching ones, probably. 
R.A. McDonald Ada, legend of a healer. healer. I must have got this at a signing or event too. Robin McKinley, Spindle's End. Robin McKinley, Beauty. Robin McKinley, Rose Daughter. I think this is not Robin McKinley. Oh, Robin McKinley, The Outlaws of Sherwood. All amazing fairy tale retellings and Robin Hood. This one is so good. If you like a really good Beauty and the Beast retelling. Oh, I kind of want to read it again. Zipped by Lara and Tom McNeil. <laughs> oh, I feel like this is a random one we acquired too. Incarnate by Jody Metals. This one was really popular back in the day. You are more than just a, a butterfly. A but, uh, butterfly? Butterfly. See, there's butterflies. Oh. This was one of those books that was up on my shelf. Waiting and waiting and waiting, and when I clean, cleaned everything up, I brought it down here. So I still want to read it. But and then we have the Twilight books, all Twilight books, and we met Stephanie Meyer somewhere. Had she just finished? No, I don't have Eclipse signed. I think it was between Eclipse and New Moon, and that was quite that was quite the thing going to her signing. I, have, I don't have Eclipse, but I do have New Moon signed. Am I remembering correctly? Yes. I was very much a part of the whole Twilight um, craze and looked forward to the new books coming out. I, I came into it right after New Moon was published, and so I found out that, that, that it was a thing and read these two really fast, and then I was a part of these two coming out, being really excited about them. And then Midnight Sun, of course, was just a little while back. And why is Midnight Sun a different size than the rest of them? Yeah. So annoying. So stupid. And what's this? That's the movie. The mo completed illustrated movie companion. companion. What the heck? <laughs> <clears throat> the Eternal Ones by Kristen Miller. This was an arc in 2010. What if love refused to die? <laughs> Sounds good. I don't think I read it. These ones, Megan Miranda, Fracture. A lot can happen in 11 minutes. I don't remember anything about that one. Ruined, a novel. This, this, this one looks like a Scholastic Book Fair one. A ghost one from the cover. This one, Visible City by Tova Mervis. Advanced reading copy. I feel like this one actually is not YA. It's an adult book. Where people watch each other's activities through the window. Creepy. Yeah. Another advanced reading copy. Oh, Angela Morrison. I, I loved her stuff. She sent me some things. Angela Morrison, See Me to Sleep, Unbroken Connection, Taken by Storm. These are really intense um, romances. This one looks like it's told through some chats and some emails and things like that. I, I'm feeling the feels just remembering. I it's It's a heartbreaker, guys. Heartbreaker. This one I can't really remember as well, but it's told in verse and um, emails and things. It's so fast and easy to read and just intense. Intense. I can't say that enough. Mustaches for Maddie is Chad Morris and Shelley Brown, local authors, husband and wife team. Um, and this is about their daughter who has brain cancer. And I actually follow her on... Facebook, Shirley Brown on Facebook, and they just, she just had brain surgery just like a couple months ago or a month ago. And guess where she went for her thing to do before she had surgery? Disneyland? Korea. Oh. To see all the K-drama places. That's cool. I think this is a, uh, a fiction, um, but they just used their, their daughter's name. Okay. I <laughs> kill the boy band. We bought this one because, first of all, I loved the cover. Even though it's so simple. Black, pink. <laughs> and I loved the title. It was so catchy to me. And I was dying to know. Ha, huh, dying to know what, what was up with this. And so, but the, the book actually made me crazy, but I actually related a lot to it. Because I read, I read this one after the K-pop thing. 
And um, what they do is they, they follow this band to their hotel. They do really bad stuff. They follow this band to their hotel and they kidnap the one dude. And I think the other dude dies in, in the adventure. It's crazy. It's bad stuff. And I ended up not liking it really. But I also laughed a bit at, uh, over it and got a kick out of some of the quotes in it that I could relate to. But this made me want to write my own band story. And I titled the working title, Love the Boy Band, which I just think is funny. Okay? It's just my little inside joke. Like, complete opposite of this where it's nice. It's a nice, sweet story. Not a kind of a crude story like this one is. Okay, now we have Brandon Mole, who's another pretty famous local author. And we have his Fablehaven series, and we have his Beyonder series, and then we have Dragon Watch, which I think is a standalone because it's different from the rest. These are more middle grade books. This is book one. Maybe that's another so probably not a series. series starting. Um, and we also have The Candy Shop War by him over here. Which this, isn't, this one is a standalone, but we ended up with two copies, and they're both signed. I think to the kids so we kept them um anyway he's an awesome local author that writes these really great imaginative these are actually middle grade but they're over here in our y section because it, it, they look pretty so yeah great great fantastical cool creatures awesome um characters okay this one Catherine Gilbert Murdoch Princess Ben I think this is another and Dairy Queen this one is not a princessy book this is like a football guy book a football romance that one was fun I remember loving it this one is more of a fairy tale retelling this looks like a used from the library book the legend of Tarek Walter Dean Myers. This one, Talk to uh, TTYL by Lauren Miracle. <sighs> so the book I'm writing right now, told in the 80s with the girls sending notes to each other through school because that's what we did in the 80s. This one is similar, but it's told with four girls and they're sending, um, their, it's their chat. But this one is so kind of raunchy, kind of, I, I tried to read it because, you know, my book is similar to this one. But I can't stomach the stuff in this book. It's seriously just not my thing. But my book is the same kind of premise, only it's a sweet 80s one. Not a raunchy whatever year this is. I don't know, if any of you are fans of this book, maybe tell me if it gets better and it's just a little icky in the beginning or what. But I tried and it should be really fast and easy. It's just not my thing, guys. It's not my thing. Blizzard's Wake, Phyllis Reynolds Reynolds Naylor. Don't doesn't she write some scary stuff? Is this a scholastic? Yes, I think that's a scholastic book fair one. Patrick Ness, um, the Knife of Never Letting Go series. I talked about this one a little bit. And it's called the Chaos Walking series, actually. This is crazy, kind of apocalyptic dystopian. The Ask and the Answer and Monsters of Men. These are disturbing, hard to read stuff, but really, really good. Garth Nix is a really, really good fantasy um, YA author. Sabriel, The Keys to the Kingdom, Mr. Monday. And this one, I think I have meant to be read forever and ever, and I don't think I ever actually got through it. The Other Side of Dark, The Name of the Game Was Murder. Two Edgar Award winners by Joan Lowry Nixon. We need to read an Edgar Award for uh, the Pioneer book challenge so there you go this must be two um two smallish novels in one i haven't read them prized i did read this one by kara m o'brien i think this one is like kind of a old it's set in older times kind of a fantasy kind of a the, the russian dream book of color and flight gina oshner How do we get a hold of this one? It feels brand new. Like, <laughs> like it wasn't a used bookstore one. 20 Boy Summer. That one was cute. Sarah Ockler. 
cute YA romance. Adorkable by Cookie O'Gorman. Really cute YA romance. Who wants a real boyfriend when faking it is so much more fun? Um, My Life and Death by Alexander Canarsi. Oh, that's the title. This is the author. Huh. That is a confusing one. I is, remember saying that too when I is the title. recognizing it. So is this one of yours? This mm, looks no. fun and easy. I don't know where it is. A novel by Susan Hayboyer O'Keefe. Haven by Beverly Pat. This is a local author. And somewhere. I do remember reading this one. It's kind of a sad one. Return to Exile by E.J. Patton. This is a local author. Live, party, and tra trap, trap, evil. E trap evil. This is to you. Mm -hmm. I read it. Is it good? Did you trap evil in it? <laughs> I don't really remember anything about it. Except for that the main character's name is Sky. Yes. And I love that name. Yeah. Is Sky a girl or a guy? A guy. Up here is Sarah Larson's books. Sarah, does she have a B? Sarah B. Larson. Endure, Ignite, and Defy, which is a cool prince, prince, uh, slave, not slave, but like the guy. It's just like kingdom-y. It's like kingdom-y. magic. Fantasy, magic. Yeah. Good stuff. And it's up here because we won a map, a framed map of the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like Korea. <laughs> Lewis books right here, all the whole box set, and then over here we have our Marissa Meyer books, the uh, the uh, the uh, Lunar Chronicles and Heartless. Um, and we have Gilded upstairs. And Gilded is upstairs, and then this is my my series of Little House on the Prairie books. I'm my my Little House in the Big Woods doesn't match. I don't know why, and that was with all the books that I read when I was probably in third, second and third grade, which sent me off on my love of reading those books they're really boring now though as a, an adult like I don't understand how kids love it sometimes but they're 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 good for kids and then this is my my Marcus Susak stack these are all the books he wrote he needs to write more I don't understand why he can't do more and he is another testament to how Authors from Australia are the best. And he wrote wonderful things. Did I tell you the story of Marcus Zusak yet? Did I tell you how I got to meet him twice? I remember when I fell in love with the book thief, I thought we would never ever see him because he lives in Australia. And I was like, why would he ever come anywhere near where I'm at? And then he did, he came to our library. I thought I had died and gone to heaven, as they say. We went three, hours early so that we would be at the front of the line. First we had to get tickets to the event. They were free, but we had to get tickets. And so that was another day where we went really early and waited in a line, got our tickets. And then the day of, we went really early, waited in the line. So we were very front of the line so that when I, when we went into the room where he was gonna be at, we were right front and center. First thing I, I, I should say is, I think I wanna move here. <laughs> into this room and uh, a couple of things became clear. The first thing was uh, that I, I, I had a speech written and everything and there's no way I can, I don't even know where it is anymore. I, I, I've just lost my nerve completely I, and I also started shaking so you're just going to have to bear with me. I'm just going to talk off the top of my head and, uh, and we'll see how we go. They take sections of you in to get your book signed and we were the front section so we were like one of the first maybe 10 or 20 people that he signed the book for and he tip he takes a lot of time signing books and writes little things and spends a lot of time and so there was a, hundreds of people there and we came back in the room and we're waiting for some friends and we waited and waited and waited hours and hours and hours and hours and finally gave up and we left them there and then they finally got in there at probably like 11 or 12 at night to get their book signed. And anyway, it turns out that he stayed until like two in the morning signing books. And he would not take a break. I know this because I knew the people that were helping. And he just kept signing and signing and signing. He is one of the best guys ever. And then we met him again when he came back and was promoting Bridget Clay. So. And that time he took a picture of you and put it on his Instagram. 
Yes, he did. He took a picture of me and put it on his Instagram. We'll show it here. Um, because I was wearing a shirt that I had made called Haunted by Humans. And he, of course, thought that was awesome. And if you don't know, that's how Book Thief ends with that statement. I am haunted by humans. And so he took a picture. And he was taking, he was putting people on his Instagram from all of his tour that he was doing. And so you were chosen. I was the chosen. I was chosen to be part of that event. Marco Susak. Awesome, awesome author. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna hurry and finish the peas. So we first have Christopher Paolini's books, Dragon books, Aragon books. I really, really, really loved them, and really got into them when when they were the big thing. I haven't read his latest book, but we did get his book signed also when he came to Costco one time. Yes, um, he's like my age. Yeah, he's a kid. <laughs> Not my age. <laughs> he was like your age when he was there signing them, but he started writing these books when he was like 15, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Ariel by Aaron Patterson and Chris White. I feel like I should know the story behind this one, but I can't remember it. And James Patterson, which, you know, we, got, we he gets made fun of a lot because he just cranks them out and he probably has a ton of ghostwriters and stuff. But I really got in to this series, the Maximum Ride series. And so we have a few of those, but three of these books. And I really loved the character of Fang. I liked them too. Yeah, they were good. But then I felt like there was just like way too many. Like, Yeah. <laughs> we kind of got sick of them after a while. But, the you know, for a good little section of our lives, we were really into them. And then there's Gary Paulson, the Transcell Saga. Mary Pearson, I love her stuff. And Scribbler of Dreams is one of my favorites. It is a modern retelling of Romeo and Juliet. House, the only way out is in. Frank Peretti and Ted Decker. I don't know how I got a hold of this book, but it looks like one I should read for October. Here's Stephanie Perkins and her th her book, the Anna Fren French Kiss books, which I absolutely loved. And The Boy Next Door should go in the middle, but I don't have that one. Um, love, love these books. I think most people know are going to be familiar with those ones. And then Susan Beth Pfeiffer. Life as we knew it and the world we lived in. This is when the moon gets knocked uh, weirdly and it messes up the tides and it and it turns into an apocalyptic disaster. <clears throat> and there's no food and the sun goes away and I can't remember all the crazy things that happen. But this will want to make you have a food supply. Let me just say that. The Daughters by Joanna Philbin. She is the daughter of Regis Philbin. I must have thought it would be fun to do that, but I don't think I ever actually read it. Maybe it's based on some of her experiences because it says they didn't ask for fame. They were born with it. <laughs> so that might be based on some of her experiences. Here's Geekerella, which we were talking about, which is the other one where they go to the Comic-Con. Yeah. And the guy is a famous dude. Like an actor. Corey Paulson, Rhea Lindis. This is like a fairy one or something. And then we have the Golden Compass books. Too. This one's kind of killed. The Subtle Knife and the Golden Compass. But I feel like... How many books are there? Mm -hmm. I feel like there might be more. But... And the Ruby and the Smoke, which is someone that I thought I needed to read and I never got to. Catherine Purdy, Burning Glass. I remember reading this one. It's pretty good. Oh, she's a local author, or at least she came to a local event. Um, Isn't really she the it. one that's like in the friend group with Sarah B. Larson? Yes. And Aaron Summerhill. Summer yes, they, they, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of them that are all friends. You're right. And then here's a whole series of fairy series called, started with Wings um, by April and Pike, also local author. Fairy, uh, wings, Spells, Illusions, and Destined. They were all really good. And then she also wrote this one called Earthbound. And that's where the P's end. We will keep this one as part two, K through P for the YA section. I talked a lot today because we came across some, some <clears throat> of my favorite authors, obviously. And so, yeah, sorry. Hopefully that's fun. Be sure and watch the first one if you missed it and then stay tuned for the next ones we will we will do another video where we finish up the YA 
and then we'll do a video where we do we'll, the next one after that will be the classics which i know a few of you are looking forward to so please stay tuned and we will keep going with this if you find it to be fun happy reading bye <laughs>